Hello, my name is Shahid Rahman. Welcome to my presentation for the South Asian Heritage Month 2020. I'm going to talk about my parents' journey from East Pakistan, which is now Bangladesh, to Cambridge. They were one of very few East Pakistanis who settled in Cambridge. My family have been part of the fabric of Cambridge for over 60 years. It is widely thought that Asian men first began to arrive in England after the Second World War because of a large influx of Asian immigrants in the 60s and 70s. In fact, there was already a small South Asian population in Great Britain in the 16th and 17th centuries. Laskars were Asian seamen who worked aboard British steamships and for over 350 years, Laskars were instrumental in the transport of goods from India to England. Laskars were led to believe that they'd enjoy a good life, earn good money to work on these ships, and it will give them an opportunity to visit rich foreign lands. When the early Muslims arrived, this was a foreign and unfamiliar land. Many were abandoned and left to fend for themselves. This message carried on through the decades. Men were in search of a good life and to flee from civil unrest in East Pakistan. This photo was taken in London in 1908 and it's copyrighted to the Museum of London. Indian Ayers cared for the children of British families, both on land and on sea, and they contributed to life in India aboard ships and in Britain. While only a few settled in the British Isles, they were the early 20th century migrants. Some were able to make their way home again, but others were abandoned and had to fend for themselves. Some begged on the streets to find money to go back home. Others often suffered poverty and poor living conditions. East Pakistan was formally established in 1947 and it became the independent state of Bangladesh on the 16th of December 1971, which was actually two days after I was born. 1957. Now my father arrived in September 1957 in London first and then came to Cambridge where he settled here. Now what was happening in that year? Well the Chevrolet was the most popular car of the year. The Academy Awards Best Picture went to the Bridge on the River Kwai. Harold Macmillan was the Conservative Prime Minister after Anthony Eden resigned in January 1957. Some parts of the UK had the sunniest June on record since records began in 1889. And here is a poster talking about Asian flu. We rarely hear the stories about the Bengali woman who arrived in post-war Britain. My mother arrived on the 15th of January 1964 at London Airport, as it was known at the time. Today it is known as Heathrow Airport. My parents were apart for seven years before she came to England. So what was happening in 1964? It was an eventful year. The Volkswagen Beetle was a popular car. £10 banknotes were issued for the first time since the Second World War. Sir Alec Douglas Home was the Conservative Prime Minister. Top of the Pops first airs on BBC TV and the BBC television service is renamed BBC One. The Tokyo Olympics took place that year and Beatlemania craze sweeping England and Beatles hit America. And the American Civil Rights Act was signed intending to end discrimination based on race, color and religion. Here's a picture of my father's passport. East Bengal was renamed East Pakistan in 1955. My father came on a voucher migration visa, and that was for people who had a specific job to do in Britain. The so-called voucher system gave the opportunity for those who were already in Britain to arrange jobs and vouchers for their relatives and friends to work in a developing restaurant business or factories. Here's the inside of his passport with his photo. So this picture says he travelled on a previous passport, 
which means this was probably his second one. This is my mother's passport. And as you can see, it says it was made in November 1963 and she was a citizen of Pakistan. So most East Pakistani settlers were from Silet and they spoke the Sileti dialect. So this is my mother's first passport and you can see the picture is attached with two rings, which is quite unusual. This is the only photo we have of her at the time. Um, and at the back of the photo, it says my grandfather's name. Here's another image of the inside of her passport. Here's my mother's entry certificate. So for this generation in Bengali families, they had clear cut roles for men and women. Men were the breadwinners of the family and women were expected to stay at home. This is the earliest photo of my father. This portrait was taken at Ramsey Musprat Studios. The photographic premises was in Post Office Terrace and they were best known as Ramsey and Musprat Studios. All picture negatives are now held at the Cambridgeshire Collection. This is my father's home in the village of Donaram, Penjigoinj in Bangladesh. This was built in 1967. My father worked 10 years in Britain, saved money to build this for his brother and his children. Most men who arrived here worked and sent money back home to support their families. This was the first house my father brought in the early 1960s, which was at 19 Willis Road in Cambridge. The average house price at that time was about £3,360. So when my mother first arrived, it was very, very cold. She came from a warm climate and she found it quite difficult to cope with the cold weather. Winters were much colder back then. The previous year, Britain experienced the coldest winter on record and my father must have experienced that. My father sold the house on Willis Road and brought another house at number six, Devonshire Road. My mother rarely called her mother by phone. It was expensive to do so in those days. My grandmother's village did not have phones. To make calls meant they had to travel to the town centre to do this, which was quite far. My mother used to miss hearing her mother's voice. She couldn't read and write Bengali. Letters used to arrive from her mother and my father used to read them to her. They were written by other members of the family. Her brother arrived a few years later. A few Bengali women had arrived by the 1970s when the community began to grow. My mother said that there were other Bengali men in Cambridge who married English women, which was quite common at the time. My mother had English neighbours who were so kind and helpful and they used to comment on her saris. Those few Bengali men who lived in Cambridge used to go to my father's house on their day off work. Mum used to cook food for them. It was a place where they felt at home, being together, talking and eating curry. All men used to get together. It really boosted morale. Here's a rare colour photo of my three older brothers outside the house on Devonshire Road. And this is the house that my parents are living in when my sister and I were born. This is the photo of my father's first restaurant. It's the New Bengal restaurant in Regent Street in Cambridge, dated 1963. And it's copyrighted to the Cambridgeshire Collections. So when did the first Indian restaurant open in England? Well, it opened in 1810 by Sheikh Dean Muhammad and his father was an ex-seaman and his mother was English and it was called the Hindustani Coffee House. So many Asian men who arrived in England went into the restaurant trade. In 1963, my father took out a 12-year lease on an office space 
at 43 Regent Street in Cambridge, which was converted to the new Bengal restaurant. The property was owned by the estate agent Watson and Son, who had premises next door at number 45. It was located at the heart of the city centre. But in November 1975, the lease of the new Bengal was due to expire, but Watsons did not wish to relet the premises, wanting it to enable them to expand their own offices. They were already using the upstairs rooms of the restaurant. A public inquiry was held. There was a lot of coverage in the Cambridge Evening News. My father did not want to lose the new Bengal, but was dip bitterly disappointed when in May 1975, Watsons won an appeal to reclaim the space and the restaurant had to close down. Here you can see the sign of the new Bengal restaurant uh, and this looks down onto Hills Road and you can see the Hills Road church just at the top. Here's another image of the restaurant. And many more Bengali men arrived by voucher migration. My father's cousin started to arrive. He helped many of his relatives come over. My parents' place was a place they all came to, a place to live initially, and a place to work at my father's restaurant. Here is a picture of the Mill Road Maternity Hospital. My siblings and I were born here. It's the oldest surviving building on Mill Road. It is now Ditchburn Place. It was originally a poorhouse built in 1838 and it became a maternity hospital in 1948. My parents' first house was on Willis Road and then they moved to Devonshire Road. And uh, so we all grew up in the Mill Road area until 1976 when they moved to the Chesterton area. While the Western world was sporting mini skirts for the first time, Bengali women were donning sleeveless blouses with chiffon saris and body hugging salwar kameez. My mother's been wearing saris since the day she came. Feminism began to become a more influential ideology as more jobs became available to young women in the 1960s. This allowed them to move away from home and become more independent women began finding a voice in society, whereas Bengali women were still finding their feet in a new country. They had to understand a new culture, learn a new language and adapt to their new life. East Pakistan became the independent state of Bangladesh on the 16th of December 1971 after a nine month war. And this was two days after my twin sister and I were born. This is the first flag of an independent Bangladesh with a country map, but it doesn't exist in the current flag today. This is a photo of my father's second restaurant, which was located on Fitzroy Street in Cambridge. And this photo is dated 1973. You can see the shoe shop next door called Freeman Hardy Willis. My father was very good friends with the owner and he used to take us there to buy shoes. My father passed away in 1985 and the restaurant was knocked down in the 1990s. My siblings discovered an ancestor. This is a photo of Safat Ali. He arrived in America in 1925 and he settled in Brooklyn, New York. He married an African-American woman and had two daughters and their names were Rosemary and Rubina. Rosemary died in 2006 and Rubina is still alive today. But in the early 1940s, his wife died and both daughters were put in a foster home and raised by a foster family. He was regarded as an illegal immigrant, even though he entered the country legally. Safat Ali remained in contact with the daughters for a short period of time and eventually he stopped seeing his daughters for reasons we don't know about. By then he lived in Queens, New York. And years later he married another woman and had a son called George. His granddaughter is Andrea Ali White and she made the connection on DNAAncestry.com and she got in touch with my late brother.
Here are details of Safat Ali's arrival. He arrived on the 5th of August 1925 in New York on the city of Durban ship. And these details are on Ancestry.com. Here's the shipping records of Safat Ali, and you can see clearly his name. And there are other men listed on this list, and he probably traveled with a group of other men, well, perhaps known to him, uh, because at that time, men didn't travel alone. But we're having trouble finding his death records because he was an illegal alien. It's likely that his death was never recorded. So we don't know when he died or where he's buried. And we hope to continue the research to see what else we can find. So just to end the slideshow, this is my historical fiction novel called Lascar. And Lascar set in the 1860s and it tells the story of one man's journey to fulfill his destiny. It begins in Silet in eastern India, which is now present day Bangladesh. And Ayan travels on a tumultuous journey and settles in East London. One of my father's ancestors was probably a Lascar. Stories were passed down orally through generations, and this inspired me to write the story. I would see this as a hidden history. Thank you for watching my presentation. Please do get in touch with me if you'd like to connect. I'd like to take the opportunity to announce that my son Ibrahim and I will be launching the Cambridge Muslim Heritage Project to uncover the hidden histories of the Muslim community in the 1950s and 60s in Cambridge. It's really important to tell these stories for future generations to come.